that, we have some colleagues here from different departments and other constituents, so we want to invite you to meet these folks and hear a little bit about them first, and then we'll go into some of the nuts and bolts processes. So I'll introduce first Mr. Osmond Berry, our Assistant Director for Campus C. How y'all doing? <laughs> Hello. 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 Okay. Uh, my name is Osmond and Barry. Um, I, was, I was once a wider student here, um, full four graduate. Um, served four years in the Army. Uh, I got out as a captain in the Army, Military Police Corps. Uh, after I got out in 2008, I uh, found a job here at Widener, and I've been working for Widener since then. Um, a little bit about myself on campus safety. I started as an officer when I uh, became a campus safety officer before I got promoted to the assistant director in 2010. And I've been doing these presentations uh, since then. Um, living off campus is something that you guys have to be aware of some, some rules. You're no longer in the influence of campus safety reach. You are under the purview of Chester Police Department. If you do get in trouble living off campus, um, police will be called on you. It's no longer campus safety responding. So there are ramifications that goes with that living off campus. With that being said, um, it's up to you to read up on the laws and the rules of uh, living off campus and being a good neighbor. Um, campus safety is also here to help you, assist you in getting some of the processes that you need to, uh, like, if you need a uh, police, uh, we could help you call the police and we could help you um, follow the police reporting system. Um, campus safety also have introduced some new safety measures. Um, we increase our safety measure by increasing the lighting on campus and all the properties on campus. As you can see, Spanglot is have new lighting on there. And all the houses that campus wide and own on campus and off campus have new lighting on them. So to increase the safety measures. Um, one of the new uh, programs that we introduced is Ally Barton. I'm going to let uh, Reggie introduce himself. Good evening. How are you guys doing? Good. Uh, well, as all of you may have seen, we yeah, have a lot of bike officers patrolling in the rural areas from Sun Hill, uh, 18th Street to 20th Street. Um, again, my name is Reginald Hurley. Um, I'm from Ally Barton. We just entered a partnership with uh, Wider Security. Um, basically, we're out there to, you know, be, not to get you guys in trouble, but to be another line of a safety net for you guys. You know, if you guys have uh, any issues, you know, you can always come to us for our escorts. Um, if you don't feel comfortable about something, you know, you can always come to us. Again, I'm always out there. I'm running around both sectors. If you see me, you can stop me. If you want to bring something to my attention, I'm always there. And I will have an open ear. Um... We do work alongside with Chester PD. That's their uh, their district, but we're out there. So uh, look forward to seeing us out there. With that being said, I have some information regarding some other uh, safety uh, apps that we have on campus. I know most of you are junior. You are uh, aware of campus safety services that we do have on campus. But we introduced like the emergency app uh, is also a new uh, way of keeping people safe on campus. Most campuses like Swarthmore, UPenn have this uh, in their campus. You could download it to your, any smartphone and uh, what it does is it helps you um, some kind of a personal security system for your, for your phone. If you hit the app, Campus Safety will get a hit in the dispatch office and we can able to call you or track you um, with our you know, cameras and also know what's going on. You can notify authority right away. It has a capability. I have some of these flyers in the back. Before you leave, make sure you pick one and look, look over it. Um, another thing that I brought with me is Deco Alarm System. This is a private company. I'm not endorsing them, but I have their card just to give you another extra layer of protection if you want to uh, go ahead and purchase an alarm system from them since you live off campus. You could do so. Um, they are a reasonable price, so um, you could tell them that you're a Widener student and uh, they will give you a discount. Um, with that being said, who here haven't signed up with the campus alert? You have not? Who has not signed up for it? Um, it's important for you to sign up for that because all the information about safety and uh, emergency on campus, that's how you receive the information. So if you haven't signed up, I have flyers in the back for you to work you through the process. Um, I just want to wish you guys you know, a safe semester 
and pay attention to your surroundings. That's the most important thing about safety. You have to be a participant in your own safety, okay? If you see something going on that you feel that is suspicious, report it. Error in the side of reporting it and not reporting it. You have a question? Uh, yeah, with the um, the safety alert, you signed up like last year. I had it. Is it just it'll carry? It's still good unless you discontinue that number. But if you have the same number, it should be good. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, I will be able to take them at this time. Yes. Um, for the camp safety alerts, I've tried for like two years now to get them, and it just doesn't work. Okay. If you want to stop by the office, I don't know, um, tomorrow if you have time, I can help you work through the uh, process. I don't know what's going on. What, what, what is it telling you? It just, uh, it said it's going to send a text for the confirmation and just never comes through. Maybe something about your carrier. Who, who do you have for your sprint. sprint? I think there's two types of Sprint. If you try the first I, one. Yeah, I did. Like I you tried both of them? Yeah. Oh, I need nothing. No. Okay. Um, just stop by um, briefly. Figure it out. Okay. Any other questions? If you've had the app before and you go ahead and check back just to double check and see what your status is, if you log in, it actually gives you an expiration date. So I know mine, when I checked mine the other day, it said mine will expire in like June of the coming year. So I know that I have a full another academic year before mine sends me a reminder that I have to update it. But you can just log in via Campus Cruiser. Check what your status is, make sure you're good, and if there's any additional alerts you want, because maybe you're visiting Delaware campus, or maybe you just want to know what's going on, you can click those buttons and make updates whenever you'd like to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. At this time, we will continue before we jump into the PowerPoint, because I know there may be other commitments that some of you have, so we're going to try to move right along. At this time, I would like to talk for a moment um, about the importance of your understanding that Widener and the City of Chester have been working for years now on improving the partnership that we have between the university and the city. And we know that as students, many of you are involved in the engagement, the civic engagement aspect of working with this city. We, as an administration, have been working closely with the mayor's office and representatives from the city in relationship to Sun Hill in particular. And we'd like to think over the last two years we have seen uh, great improvement and we continue to expect to see that improvement will happen. One of the key individuals that has been working with us on campus here that represents the city of Chester is Ms. Nicole. I'm going to invite her to the front to talk to you for a few moments about some of the initiatives and some of the partnership aspects that we have going with the city related to Sun Hill. Hi, my name is Nicole Cogdell. I'm in May of 2012. Um, Mayor John Luther and Dr. Harris, the president of Gardner, placed me on special assignment to facilitate something, it was a conversation called listening sessions, because a lot of the residents were extremely concerned about the relationship between students and the neighborhood. A lot of the, a lot of the residents um, felt that a lot of the students at Widener attended college, but they didn't feel that they actually live in their specific neighborhood. So we had three listening sessions and began to, it was paper all around the room, and we began to discuss what are some of the issues that is really going on, you know, what's going on here? Because a lot of them had children, you know, they had been living in Sun Hill, some of them for 20 or 30 years, so what's the difference now? Because, you know, students party and they turn up and they have fun and it's frat parties and it's all that stuff, right? But you know, what can we do so that the students can continue to have fun and do them, the city doesn't have to keep on coming out, and everybody can actually live in this neighborhood. And guess what the issue was? It wasn't the parties. You know, it wasn't the turning up. It was the trash. <laughs> trash. That's all we heard about was trash, trash, and more trash, and trash, and trash, and trash. And the way the students put out the trash, and the way that the students put out the bulk trash, and the way that the students had the trash in front of their homes, and you know, the back alleyways, you, you name it, I've heard about trash. I have taken pictures of trash. Um, we have created policy um, together in terms of trash. So let's just go ahead and put it on the line, and let's just talk some trash, okay? <laughs> Does anybody know of when Trash Day is in Sunday? Thursday. Wait a minute, I want to hear it again. When is it? Thursday. Thursday. So everybody knows that Thursday is Trash Day. 
So why is the trash out on Monday and Tuesday and, and Friday and whenever you feel like putting out the trash because you don't want the trash in your house, you actually want to put the trash out. So I'm just asking you to please put the trash out on Wednesday night, even if it's 9 o'clock or Thursday morning. Because Carl Oliver, we don't want to hear about the trash. And now it's getting to the point where it will be thousand dollar fines that will go out to the landlords. And I can name the streets that are the trash problems. The 800 block of Glen Terrace, the 900 block of Glen Terrace, the 1400 block of Ridley Place, the 800 block of East 15th Street, and the 900 block of East 16th Street. Trash all over the place. And then when students decide to move out, they just dump the sofas all over the place and it's something called bulk trash. Chester is the only municipality in Delaware County that you don't have to pay for bulk trash. The only thing that you have to do is call 610-447-7888 and they will pick it up for free. So, please, Sunhill, I'm not going to bore you with the trash, but if you see these little notices on your door stating that it's a trash problem, a noise problem, any type of uh, problem that's going to affect, you know, any type of ordinance, um, Carlisle will put it on the door, but just know that it's a team behind the scenes that have all of the photos. Also, I am the social media person for our team. I look at Twitter, Foursquares, Instagram, and Facebook. So anything dealing with violence or whatever, basically our team gets it. Carlisle will tell you it was three instances last year that we were able to intercede with. So watch what you, you know, put on Facebook as well. So, I'm, I'm, I'm done talking trash. Do you have a question? <laughs> I don't. Talk with me a little bit. It's 15th Street, but down the street from TV Bank. Down at, the, you're more Close like near Nova Vista, so near Nova Vista. That's more mm -hmm. near Nova Vista. <laughs> um, no, but the, or, I mean, in terms of your specific trash day, I can leave you our office number to tell you, but at the end of the day, the ordinance is the same. Trash goes out, bulk trash, any more than six pieces. I mean, if you cannot put any more than six pieces out and put trash out on trash day. Also, grass. Grass is a problem, too. So anything, I mean, I don't know if your landlord is responsible in terms of cutting the grass, but please, that's the other issue. So it's not the wild parties. It's not that it's trash. You have a question? You said you can't put more than six bags out? The bulk trash. Well, I, you can't put large pieces out no more than six pieces uh -huh. because then it's considered as there's no more than six pieces if so you can be fine if it's regular trash put out as much as you want okay. anybody else other questions and it has to be in a trash bag so please not to save a lot for that in the other bag just get some trash bags uh, my girlfriend lives on an 18, and she said her trash, like, was picked up for two weeks or some reason. Then, again, if, if they call us, you can call the city's office. If you don't get a response, if you call our office specifically, Sun Hill is my area, so I definitely respond back within at least 24 hours, and the trash is normally picked up within 48. Anybody else? Before Nicole leaves, I want to make sure I stress how this works. We partner together while they're in the city. So what will happen is neighbors will give us information. It can come in directly to me. It can come in directly to Nicole. It can come into the president's office. It's all going to channel and come back to me. I'm the off-campus housing representative for student affairs, one of my many hats. So I am the one, and those of you who lived off-campus last year can attest to this. When there's a complaint made, I make house calls. It's called the good neighbor policy. So I follow up in person. I don't call people and just say, come to the office anymore. That takes too long. So me and Osmond Dunbarry, who was speaking earlier first, he and I come out together, we're knocking on doors. We're looking for people. We're trying to gain understanding about the trash, bulk trash. If it's a grass issue, if it's a violation of the city citation laws, we're going to follow up on those, the ordinances. We're going to follow up. The goal is to make sure that we're in compliance with the city's expectations. What you don't want to have happen is neighbors who've been paying taxes for many, many years, if you want them to be okay sometimes with the fun times you're going to have, then take care of business when it comes to the landscaping, if that's not your responsibility, then the landlords, the garbage, the trash, the snow removal. If that's not you, you might want to pitch in anyway with some of the elderly, get some cool points. 
Things that then they may not call 911 or Chester Police immediately when your music's up and we're having a fun time, right? So think of it that way. It's a give and take exchange. But if complaints are lodged, we're coming out to talk to people. And everybody who knows knows when I come out to talk to people, we usually want results and we don't want to make a return visit. So let's make sure we understand early in the semester and in the year how important it is. There's a monthly listening session meeting the first Thursday of every month at 6.30 p.m. in the Wyman Room in the University Center, which is located in the back nooks by Room D. As off-campus housing students, you are eligible to come out. If you ever had a complaint, a concern, or wanted to come out and see some of the issues, you could pop in or send a representative from your house out to one of those meetings. It's the first Thursday each month starting next Thursday. Our first meeting at 6.30 usually runs for about an hour, hour and a half in the winding room. When we get complaints there, we often are coming up to find out and resolve those situations. And but we know we're going to have a better year this year and just than we have And just as he just said, I mean, I have to report to the mayor, and as he does, President Harris once a month. Yes. So they get all of the reports. At the end of the day, the mayor just wants it to go away, and it's my job to make it go away. Please. Please don't make me take photos, because I will. Mm -hmm. I will. Nicole, the one last thing, could you touch on the recycling? Oh, the recycling. The re oh, God, how's the recycling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> recycling is picked up every Wednesday. Um, if anybody needs any recycling bins, again, the only thing that you have to do is call 610-447-7888. If you don't have trash cans, and if you need trash cans, you can call the Community Liaison Office. 610-447-7700, and our extension is 1202. We're getting ready to come out with a major recycling campaign um, with Councilwoman West's um, department as well as Councilman Jacobs. We'll have information at all of the listening sessions um, pertaining to if you're not sure as to what to put in what can, but all of it comes um, under one mainstream. Also, Carlisle didn't tell you, but um, Judge Davis is also at all of our meetings. So after he sees that everything was explained to all of the students and then your name just happens to come up, he's not going to be as generous as he would be otherwise. So everybody have a good night. <laughs>
Uh, it creates cultural opportunities that cities without universities don't have. So there are so many benefits that a community gains from having a vibrant university. And uh, during the last 20 years, as CNU has evolved from basically a commuter school towards a school where a very significant number of the students live on campus, its character has changed. And that change has brought with the challenges that the, the university, the city, uh, our citizens, and the students all need to think about as we try to cooperate and, and move our community forward. Well, there's no secret that when students move into single-family neighborhoods, it creates problems. Most of our students here in Newport News are good citizens, people we welcome, people we hope will stay and live in Newport News and raise their families here. Uh, but college students' lifestyles are different than many of the folks in these neighborhoods that have lived in places like uh, Glendale and Riverside for 30 or 40 years, and their hours are different, the amount of noise they tend to make is different, uh, their interests and concerns are different. They are young, they want to have a great time. Some of them aren't aware of the barriers, that there are, there are rules and regulations to, that have to abide by to make yourself a good neighbor. It's not that the bad kids, they're young, they're old, they've all been young, they want to have a good time, they just have to be taught how to do it respectfully and take their neighbors into consideration and make a peace and quiet and so forth. And so what we decided is we, we want to try to work on the relationship not only from an enforcement standpoint, telling citizens uh, what they can do with city government if they're having a problem or reminding students of the rules and regulations they ought to follow. We need to do that in our website at ngov.com and the brochures that we prepared for both students and residents do summarize the rights and responsibilities uh, of students in a neighborhood and, and give residents uh, suggestions on what might be a violation or what you can do. But we feel strongly that it's got to be more than a list of regulations and <coughs> phone numbers that you call if there's a problem. As the city manager's message in the brochure indicates, when students and residents come together, it's like motorists at a four-way stop. We're never really sure what's going to happen, but we need to start with goodwill. The purpose of our uh, project today is to make the community and the local students that live off campus aware of the restrictions and the law as far as uh, what they're required to comply with, keeping the, uh, the residents that they're living in uh, clean, keeping the grass cut, keeping vehicles uh, out of the highway, to uh, attempt to keep party noise down, and also to um, enforce any any violations of law that we that we see, and make the kids and the residents aware that that will be the case. Good morning, sir. Gentlemen, what we have to do to have this morning is we have a flyer that's been put together by the city manager's office in Fort News. We're trying to no locate the uh, students in the area. Make them familiar with the rules and the procedures that they're required to comply with. These flyers will uh, explain to you the policies and procedures that those of us on there in fact you have some problems with. Uh, I think it's a great effort and it's very much appreciated on, on behalf of the city manager's office. Uh, I think that's the right step to take. I think it'll be a plus for the university and also for the city manager's office to have both agencies continue to work hand in hand and help them make the city manager's job easier and also the, uh, the department. We just all want to get along. Take care. Take care. Take care. Very quickly, for sake of time, because we know, once again, there are some commitments outside of this tonight that we want to allow some of you to get to, so we're going to cover as much information as possible. One of the key things to know with living off campus, and many of you maybe have heard me more than one time already, whether you be athletes or people who've lived on campus for more than one year, some of the things are still the same that are the concerns out there. Noise is always going to be one of the number one draws of attention. So we want to be smart about the noise levels because that's what gets the police called too many times 
um, and often people get caught in the crossfire. So just be cognizant of and respectful of your neighbors and each other. Noise is a huge factor. We've talked trash. Parking is another issue that I hear on a monthly basis is a concern, but that's not just only a student concern, that's a whole city concern. The grid, the way Sun Hill was designed, when those houses were built, primarily row home style, not every individual that lived in the house had a vehicle. So as you can imagine, those tight streets with as many cars that are on them now, that's not an ideal situation. So we're always going to ask you to safeguard yourself, your vehicles, be smart about it. But it's tight in there and it's tricky on a lot of those streets. So if this is your first time living in that community, obviously be mindful because they do ticket quite often, um, particularly if people are parked illegally when it comes to particularly uh, disabled or handicapped spaces. So you want to be careful with that. I'm going to tie all the alcohol, party, and underage, all that together very quickly so that I don't sound too redundant. But at the end of the day, it comes down to this. If you are under 21 years of age, you want to be careful with the alcohol stuff on campus and off. Those of you who have read up on the policy should understand that, you know, once again, not to rain on your parade, but the problem is you don't know who's going to show up at your door. The Chester Police Department officer who's in a good mood or the one who's going to really stick it to everyone. So we're going to say be law-abiding citizens. Be respectful of the alcohol policy, but in the event you choose to have socials or parties and you are of age, remember that there's host responsibility and you're responsible for your guests. So if underage individuals are at your house at any point when alcohol is present, you will be responsible for that if there's any providing alcohol to minors. So you want to be very mindful of those laws and those policies and familiarize yourself if you do not know them already. When I think of some of these other bullets, lewd and indecent behavior, Disorderly conduct, for example, many times when alcohol is present and there are 50, 75, 100 or more people at a house and they aren't allowing people to use their bathrooms consistently, we see people out in the streets urinating in public, as an example, losing indecent behavior. We see people vandalizing properties, trampling people's flower beds, breaking people's fences, right? Scrambling when the police come and tearing up others' properties. We don't want our students to be involved in any of those behaviors. Okay, I get those complaints not as often as we used to at Widener, but they're still coming in on a periodic basis. So we want to be mindful and respectful of other people's properties. Although you may be renting, unless some of you are owning properties, you may be renting, there is a landlord who will be held accountable in cases and situations. And when we hold landlords accountable, or the city holds landlords accountable with fines, they often try to trickle that down to the renters. So you want to be mindful of that and how that process works when it comes to affecting your rent. Many years ago, it's changed. Many years ago, my biggest concern is somehow used to be fights that would happen in the streets after parties let out. Now we're talking mostly about trash. So I'm not going to talk too much about the old days, only to say let's keep going in the right direction. We're seeing less violence. We're seeing less of those issues, which means the student expectations have gone up, and we appreciate that. But now let's work on the small things, the little things that also disturb the community, right, and seem disrespectful or a lack of appreciation for the neighborhood. Things like trash and keeping up the property. So be mindful of that. Smoking's a challenging one because we've pushed, so to speak, smoking to the off-campus, to the perimeters of the campus. That now affects the residents right on the perimeter and the periphery of our campus. So be mindful of that. There are some people who don't like cigarette butts in their lawns and on their sidewalks, etc. So, and you may be some of those residents who, it's your house that is having this done in front of it by students who may live on campus or going off campus to smoke. So let's be mindful and respectful of the community. If our guests are doing these types of things, we want to minimize and limit those types of situations. Because once again, cigarette butts is trash. And it ends up being down on the ground and something that needs to be cleaned up. And that bottom line issue is respect. You got to give it to get it. And we would expect our student body particularly our off-campus population, when partnering with our city to make sure that we're on the right side of the law, we're on the right side of respect, we're being respectful. You have to give to get it. But at the same time, you also have to be concerned about neighbor relations. You know, we know that this past summer, for example, there were a number of break-ins in houses and residences in the Sun Hill community. And we know that there are individuals that have been rummaging through. And I'm sure they're going to continue to do the same types of things where they're monitoring when you come and go to your house, and different break periods, when you go for several days, be mindful of those periods when you're leaving your houses, depending how far you're into Sun Hill, can determine just how much you need, 
I don't advise leaving too many valuables, for example, when we go away for break periods. I would advise us to make sure back door area.